Look, there's a guy on YouTube that I really didn't like, and I decided to confront him about it. His name is Matt Diavella. Before you jump to any conclusions, I want to share with you a side of myself I'm not exactly proud of, and I want to see if I can change your mind about something. Matt Diavella, by the way, for reference, for those of you that don't know who he is, is another content creator on YouTube. But what I have to share with you has a lot more to do with me, and a little thing that many of us struggle with called envy. What I've come to realize is that envy says a lot more about the person that feels it than the person it's directed towards. This is for everyone who takes the leap to express themselves or create something in this world. You were familiar with me, but did any feelings of envy come up? Who are you talking about? Like, are, do you have specific people that, you're, that you have in mind here? Or who, 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 who are you talking about? Part one, a dream. Let me rewind a little bit to provide a bit of context. All right, quiet, you guys. <laughs> I started YouTube in 2015, and as I've said on multiple occasions before, for the first four years of posting videos on the internet, it didn't really go anywhere. It's easy to say that the numbers don't matter, and in many ways they don't really. It sort of depends on what your goals are. They're not a metric of your value as a human, the quality of your work, or the depth of your impact. I put a lot of pressure on myself to try to make this work, because I wanted to become location independent. I wanted to find a way to make a living on the internet. And for better or for worse, to make that happen, the numbers do matter a little bit. So after posting every single week for a very long time and then taking a break to reflect and to grow as a filmmaker, I decided to try again. This is late 2018. I just had this dream, right? This dream that I could connect with people around the world and I could make a living doing something that I really love, expressing myself, and I couldn't let go of that. It was too big a dream of mine. Yes, we can criticize how it operates, how addictive it is, how it makes us compare ourselves to others, but there's something there, you know? There's something about the ability to connect with people around the world that was not possible in this way in the past. I just wanted to see more content that illustrated realness, you know, more vulnerability. I want to see human beings, not slick brands. Content that didn't just feel like blank, empty carbs, empty entertainment. So that became my focus. That became the core of everything that I wanted to create. Now, around this time, I stumbled upon a channel, thanks to the algorithms of this guy called Matt Diavella, doing basically that well shot, well edited videos, sharing tips and information on how to improve your life. And you know what? It felt like he was speaking honestly. One thing I really connected with early on was how Matt talked about his student loan debt. Let's talk about how to get out of debt. That's what led him to minimalism and this journey that just felt relatable in many ways. The anxiety that he felt, things like that. When you shared about the student debt, I was like, this, this guy, this is a real one. You know, like the fact that you were talking about that and you yeah. were and the struggles that came with that and it's kind of embarrassing honestly right because you feel like you've made some financially poor decisions right immediately i was like this guy's on to something i've never been interested in creating more of something that already exists out there you know originality is really important to me but at the same time i was paying attention because like look this guy had a format that was working. By taking a closer look, I wanted to see what I could learn from this. And by the way, this is something we all do. This is human nature. We are all watching what works and what doesn't work, consciously or unconsciously. I was really inspired by what I was seeing. And I was so inspired, in fact, that I actually made a video about him. It was called something like, How Matt Nivella is Beating the Algorithms, or something like that. Matt, if you're watching this, I just wanna say thank you for helping me become a better person and for showing me that it's still possible to make it on social media. And basically, this guy was proving that it was possible, so I was inspired, you know? If he can do it, I can do it. Part two, take off. Okay, so fast forward a little bit. Four or five months later, after posting consistently every single week, even twice a week sometimes, I mean, just pumping out as high quality content as consistently as possible in a way that was totally unsustainable, things started to take off. My wildest dreams were starting to come true. My channel takes off in a way I still cannot comprehend. And this is supposed to be the happiest period of my life. Like, that is making it. I was making it. And yet it wasn't that. This actually was one of the most stressful periods of my life. I had no systems in place. Like, as human beings, we're not built for this. And in the midst of this hurricane of attention and change that's happening in my life, begins to appear a new trend. I start noticing a lot of comments comparing me with Matt Diavella. So all of a sudden, it goes from this guy that I'm seeing on the internet to this name that's popping up in comments as people are comparing me with him. I could see why. There are visual similarities, right? 
white guy. My guess would be Matt Divella has Italian ancestry. Davella, it's an Italian last name. Even has a background working as a filmmaker, right? Like I worked in the industry and so did he before doing YouTube. It's funny, I mean, even like there was overlap in terms of the content that we create, of course, because we're talking about very similar things. A Venn diagram of what we talk about. And like, there's certainly an overlap there within the self-development world. And you know what? At first, I definitely took it as a compliment. Like, you're comparing me with Matt Diavella? Stop, you know? <laughs> like, come on. No, but seriously, I'm 10 years younger than him. He's a very successful filmmaker, millions of subscribers. I'm in shape, but like, come on. I do not have those biceps. Quite frankly, people have been objectifying me. Those biceps though, those f***ing pecs though. Sorry, what? I was distracted by Matt's biceps. And I wanted to take this opportunity right here to say thank you. People were literally putting me in the same category as this guy that I looked up to. But what started out as like a steady trickle of comments and comparisons turned into a waterfall. And of course, some of those comments were not super nice, saying I'm like the cheap version or the knockoff or that I was stealing from him. Did you ever struggle with comparison with other artists or other people or other filmmakers or siblings or something? I came across uh, this YouTuber named Peter McKinnon. He built his channel from zero to two million in one year. Back in the day, like when I would see people with 50K subscribers, I'm like, oh wow, that person's like famous. That's amazing. And then I hit it and I was like, so distraught. And I was like, you know, I'm in this position where I should be the happiest I've ever been. I should be looking at like, uh, the success that I had at that point and just be celebrating like wild. But no, I'm looking at Peter McKinney being like, I'm never gonna be able to make videos like him. Like his videos are so good. I'm never gonna be able to build a channel that's 1 million, 2 million subscribers. So much of what we do is like comparing ourselves to like the number of subscribers people have or to the type of content that they're creating. Uh, it, yeah, it's very easy to get lost and kind of forget the reason why you do it to begin with. I 100% resonate with what you're talking about. You know, naturally, I think my feelings started to change. Nothing against Matt, but I was like, people, can you please just see me for my own work? You turn these people who are doing amazing things into the enemy. <laughs> I think like you rationalize it in your head to be like, all right, I have to hate this person. It's like they, they must be miserable. They must be actually a really mean person. <laughs> they, 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 must, like, they must have no problems in their life. And like you create this kind of like image in your head of who they are. I went from being inspired by this guy to kind of wishing he didn't exist because his name just kept haunting me, you know, kept following me everywhere. And this was happening wherever I went. You know, I lived in Italy for a while, as some of you know. And even in Italy, Italians were like, ma davvero, ma davvero, è veramente incredibile, adoro. And I, in my envy, was like, ma non è neanche in questo paese. Che cazzo c'entra? Envy is not a good look on anybody. We all agree on that. Like, I'm not here to tell you envy is bad, right? Because we all know it's bad. We all know it looks awful. But that doesn't change the fact that it's a real thing. What I was struggling with, was this desire to be recognized. I'm making these things on the internet. I'm expressing myself, I'm trying to be vulnerable. I wanted recognition. I did want people to admire me for me, not in relation to anybody else. And this desire to be special, it's human, but it's dangerous. You can't remedy feelings of inadequacy with the admiration of thousands or even millions of people on the internet. My hunt for the approval of others, this need to be special, it was pulling me away from all the other amazing things happening in my life. I was living my dream and yet I couldn't enjoy it because I was more caught up in not being compared. Comparison, for better or for worse, is what humans do. We get compared to our peers, our siblings, our parents. I started to dislike him even though none of this was his fault. If only I had just believed in myself more, I think I would have saved myself a lot of anguish back then. That feeling of envy towards other creators. And like a lot of times it comes up of like the, the newcomers. Cause like we're the old dogs on the block now. <laughs> like I think often I, I tie my self-worth to my work way too much. <laughs> and I think that's probably, if I went to therapy, I think that's probably what would come out of it. Before I go any further, I want to talk briefly about the sponsor of this video, which is BetterHelp. This is in honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, and I also think that BetterHelp is an amazing tool to use if you're struggling with your own sort of emotional challenges, as we all do sometimes. A little bit of context really quick. I'm a huge believer in therapy. I've been doing it every single week for the last three years, and this is something that I learned from my parents who have been doing it themselves for many, many years. Honestly, I think that this is still something that is largely misunderstood at the societal level, and I personally see it as as an incredible investment in yourself and better getting to know yourself and doing that internal work. I think without therapy, I would have had less resilience in navigating emotionally challenging situations that I found myself in. The problem is, and this is no secret, therapy is not the most accessible thing out there. 
right? It can cost a lot of money and it can also be very difficult to find somebody that you click with. And this is what I like about BetterHelp. They are working really hard to make this sort of thing more accessible. They offer customized online therapy, which includes video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anybody if you don't want to. You can also request a new therapist at any time at no additional charge, which I really like because you, that means you're not locked in with somebody you don't like working with. If you're interested, you can use the link in my description to get 10% off your first month. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's dive back in. I go back to this idea that there's a deep desire in all of us to feel seen. And yes, there is ego at play. I am not a monk living in the mountains. I am not enlightened. I absolutely have my insecurities and my desire to feel special. Everyone wants recognition. Without enough awareness of that or how to handle that, it can get messy. And that's what happened for me. One thing I've definitely known from the very beginning though, is that none of this is Matt's fault. And that is exactly why I was saying in the beginning of this video, that this has a lot more to do with me than anything else. Matt was just living his life, creating content, you know, doing his thing. But he represented something different to me. He was more so a mirror of myself. It's really weird to speak so openly about something that I'm not proud of. And there were obvious parallels, right? And then some unfortunate coincidences. Like for example, our videos on 30 days of no cold showers came out nearly at the same time. Now in 2019, that was a trend. So a lot of people were doing this. And it's funny because I even like used one of your clips in my cold shower videos, like very oh, early right, on, if you remember man. that. Yeah. Um, same sort of deal with our time tracking videos. In late 2019, I posted a video that I'm very proud of still to this day called Why You Never Have Enough Time. Lo and behold, Matt had actually already posted a video with this exact same title. I had no idea about that until people started leaving comments about it and saying, oh, you copied him again. I was gutted until I went and took a look at his video and realized what we had done was completely different. His video is a very useful guide on time management. You know, it's like how to not be late to stuff. And mine centered around my questioning of the very meaning of productivity, right? Of this idea that we'll ever get to a place that will guarantee happiness. Honestly, they're completely different videos. You're welcome to check them out for yourself. Who cares if they have the same title? It's a strong title. It is dangerous to consume other people's stuff because if it influences you in any way, you know, it, people are like, this, this, you're making me think of this guy or whatever, you know? I don't know if people just get sort of excited about that, you know? They're like, oh, I see a, I see a link. Oh man, well like, you ever, have you ever come up with a really great idea and somebody's like, oh yeah, X did, like this person did that. And I'm like, that's kind of not what I'm after right here. <laughs> I'm not looking for you to tell me who did it way better than I'm gonna be able to do it. Yeah, exactly. Part three, the artist's journey. It is this sort of personal journey that we all have to kind of go on, but in our own sort of different ways, right? Like it, the characters that, that bring this up for you or different than, than for me. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah, my friend uh, gave me advice early on like in this journey and he's like, you can't think your way out of overthinking. You know, I noticed something very interesting recently. It has been a very long time since I've seen even one comment in my comment section on any of my videos comparing me with Matt Diabella. Like years. And here's what I think happened. A very natural process just had time to naturally unfold. What am I talking about here? I'm basically saying that the journey that all artists must go through is through this phase where you are compared with people. I feel like we naturally just all kind of have gone in our own unique directions. You know, everybody has a very established, unique style. Sometimes that just takes a long time. It just takes a few years, dozens and dozens of videos to get there. Until I got there, it felt like, oh my God, I'm, I'm never going to be able to distinguish myself. I'm never gonna be a better Nathaniel Drew. So I just have to be the best Matt Diavella that I can be. Whatever like kind of creates my own style, I just need to lean into the things that feel right to me. And only by continuing to do that thing, do you slowly grow into yourself? And like I said, it's just part of the process. There's no skipping this stage, no matter how badly any of us wish we could. We all have to go through this. In my opinion, I think we each made original content from the very beginning. But as I already mentioned, I think there were a lot more similarities earlier on. Slowly, I just naturally established myself as somebody who is driven by my desire to see the world. Coming around, abandoned, decaying castles. Why not? Well, I mean, wouldn't you? and reflect on life. Passionate about languages. Where do they say? 
Io qua albanese, però sono vissuto in Italia vent'anni. Ah, ok. For very obvious reasons, the envy that I felt never helped, as it never does. But I knew that at the time, and it was a phase that I had to go through. This used to be an emotionally charged topic for me, and it isn't anymore. Talking to you is... It, it, it just obliterates all of the, th the negative thoughts or the ruminations or whatever that I used to have. Because I'm talking to a human being who's facing the same challenges and who is also struggling, you know, and, and, and figuring things out for themselves. I don't know, I think there's just something about how, and this is the challenging thing too, it's like people will compare you with people that sometimes you can't necessarily meet, right? And so you create this gigantic demon in your head. Here's another thing that really helps quite a bit which is to meet other content creators. I mean, I am surprised every single time. More and more now, I try to go in without any sort of preconceived notions or any judgments, even if I've been following their content for a long time. Because what I end up finding every time I meet somebody is a human being, a person with contradictions and nuance and layers to who they are. It's always going to be more than what you see in what they share on the internet. Everybody now is on the same page, I think, in terms of social media being distorted. But I think there's very little on the internet that has context. So even if it feels honest and authentic and well-made and it's your friend, you're just like, you're getting, you're not getting the full context. You're never getting the full context when you consume something on the internet. And that's what makes it so hard, I think. Even just having the awareness that whenever you feel envy or jealousy, that it's that desire to feel special, feeling threatened, that's a huge help already. As long as you don't make it this thing that you base decisions off of, then I think you're okay. I don't know, I don't think it's helpful to pretend that it's not there. I think it's much better to just develop an awareness of it and to explore it and see what you can learn about it. The ugly truth is that when something about somebody else rubs you the wrong way, when you dislike them for a particular reason, oftentimes that says more about you than the person themselves. So to go through this process has been humbling and I'm grateful. And I hope that if you're struggling with envy in some shape or form, that you know that that does not have to last forever. The more committed you are to exploring that feeling within yourself and learning about yourself, the sooner that feeling of envy is likely to go away. You can't solve it externally. No amount of success is going to fix it. I'm really grateful that you have been open over the last few years, that you are also vulnerable I originally connected with your content through the vulnerabilities that you share in your material. And likewise, I mean, honestly, like, uh, I have nothing but, but good vibes uh, sending your way. Like, you are one of the most kind, caring, and compassionate people that I've met. Um, and you make everybody feel super comfortable whenever you're in a conversation with them. And, like, this felt like one of the most convers comfortable conversations I've ever had. So it's, uh, you, I think you have that ability. You have this effortless spirit about yourself, which is... Awesome. Ah, thanks, man. <laughs> ah, I'm touched. You know, there are times where I think about how crazy and beautiful it is that we have this hardware, right? That biologically, as human beings, we evolved to be this way. And how some of the evolutions that we developed that helped us stay alive when we were hunter-gatherers can now serve a new purpose in our modern world, in our modern lives. And that new purpose is the development of a spiritual path, that these emotional triggers that we have can lead us deeper within ourselves. To be honest with you, this felt like an important video to make because I have not seen anybody talk about envy in these ways, and I think that I would have benefited from hearing somebody talk about it in this way when I was in the thick of it and struggling with it. Don't demonize other people. What a crazy journey we're all on, huh? <laughs> wow.